Hey, it's Sean. And it's Bree. Welcome to episode 10. Yeah, season 2, episode 10. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the old Finch Bridge in Scarborough, Ontario. We're going to be talking about Dundurn Castle in Hamilton, Ontario. And we're going to talk about the Cornwall Jail in Cornwall, Ontario. Sounds good. And stay tuned also for our paramedia segment where we are going to have an interview with Sarah Zamet, who is the series producer for Hotel Paranormal. So we're going to talk to her about season two, what it's like to work on the show, mm-hmm. um, you know, what intrigued her about the show and, you know, asked her a whole bunch of questions uh, uh, um, with pertaining to the show. So answered some of our things that we wanted to know. So hopefully it answers some of yours as well. So as always, Bree, how is your summer going? Well, it's going pretty good. Um, I'm preferring the sunny days over the many rainy days we've had. Yes, we have had some long stretches of rain. Mm-hmm. Um, like it's cold for long enough. <laughs> yeah. Please enjoy a nice hot summer. Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. What about you? What have you been up to? We actually took a drive up to uh, Georgina, which is um, a small little town just north of Toronto. Um, It is on the southern end of Lake Simcoe. Um, So we kind of took a drive along there and um, got out and took some pictures and got the water and stuff like that. It was actually quite quiet in the closer to the evening time when the sun was setting. That's cool. Yeah, it was really nice. I would definitely recommend to go up there. There's lots of um, like parks and stuff like that to um, enjoy that's close to the water. Mm. Yeah. I like taking pictures of the sunset on the water. It's very well, pretty. yeah, because they always turn out so good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't really get a bad shot, right? Nice. <laughs> <clears throat> So anyways, yeah, and then just the usual stuff, like with things opening up again, starting to visit some family and friends that we haven't seen in quite some time. So yeah, doing that as well. And I, I believe next next month we're going to get together and actually record the show together. Yes. So I'm excited <laughs> about that. Um, so something to look forward to. Yeah. But, you know, sure. as, pardon? So it's been forever. It has been forever. <laughs> But without further ado, let's get right into talking about the old Finch Bridge. Right. Now, I'm going to ask you, because you might have driven over this bridge yourself. Um, I, I don't know. Have you? Do, do you? do you recognize it in, when you were doing the research? Um, I'm trying to, you know what, I probably what I should have done was looked it up on, a, on the map, on Google Maps. Yeah, well, it's... I would have been able to visualize it a bit better. Because I know I've taken Finch. Yeah. One time. Yeah, and it's kind of right in where the the, the Toronto Zoo is. And it's a metal it's a metal bridge that you go on. And it's a I single... I recently did. Yeah. Because I went to the zoo... Um, oh, my gosh. When? Um, June. I went to the zoo in June. Mm-hmm. And we had to go under... And it was only, you could only go one car at a time and it was under, and there was a, a wooden bridge. And I remember, I think I said to the boys, I was like, oh my God, that freaks me out. <laughs> oh, this one is not wooden, it's metal. Oh, okay. Then then it's a different one. Okay. 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 So this bridge was constructed in 1954. It's located at Swells Road and Old Finch Avenue in Scarborough, and it crosses the Rouge River. And this is how the Rouge River kind of plays a part in this bridge. So in 1954, there was a hurricane that kind of drifted up the, the East Coast, if you will, and ended up hitting Toronto. So what happened was a lot of, because there was so much water and so much wind and high winds and what have you, it washed away a lot of bridges. So that's, that's what happened. And, and 
so people in like the Pickering Ajax area were cut off from Toronto. There was no way to, or, or, you know, having any way to ease the congestion. Mm-hmm. So they built a bridge uh, to replace it. And it took three days. Three days? Yeah. The Canadian army came in and realized that this bridge needed to be built. And they put this bridge together in three days. And that is including waiting for the supplies to come. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, it's technically a Bailey bridge. So it's a single lane uh, bridge that was constructed of metal and it's still in use to this day. And as I was mentioning, I've lived in the area for a number of years and I've gone over this bridge many, many, many times. And even at night, um, driving with friends and, and, and with my brother. And it's very eerie at night because, you know, um, if you're ever there, it, it's just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like you go from, um, you know, like, I mean, it's, 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 outdoors and you're in the forest but it goes to very dense forest and then you go over this bridge and you're basically going over this river so yeah so i i just really i never knew the actual story that kind of went behind it and and you know you never really think about that i'm just thinking about hey i'm going over a metal bridge i've never been over it wow yeah i just looked at pictures of it and I've, i've never seen it wow i'm gonna have to go yeah, like, I mean, that's that's so cool. And, you know, there's also been a plaque that was placed there to commemorate the extraordinary efforts of the 2nd Field Engineer Regiment, which are the ones that built um, the bridge. Hmm. And then there's two other um, Bailey Bridges in the GTA. Uh, one is downtown Toronto and another is in Markham. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the history of it. I, I was amazed by how quick they put this bridge together. Three mm-hmm. days to construct yeah. a bridge. Like, I think they need to start building our highways. <laughs> <laughs> right? They feel like they're taking forever. Right? Yeah. Or the Eglinton Road. Oh, my oh, God. Don't even talk to me about that. I Yeah. <laughs> I deal with that on a daily basis. Oh, nightmare. What a nightmare. Yeah. So anyways, that's a, that's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pass it over to you, Bree, for the ghost of Old Finch Bridge. All right. Sounds good. So people have been said to park their cars and walk over the bridge. When they stopped walking, they would hear footsteps continuing on. And then when they would turn around, there would be nobody there. And then they would go back to their car, drive over the bridge, and after they've started the car, it would die. And they would have to restart it over and over and over again. Wow. And this is <laughs> while they're on the bridge? Yeah. Okay. That, I wouldn't be so good with that. And yeah. that <laughs> Like, say you have to get out. Like, say you have to get out of the car. You're on a metal bridge with water underneath you. I'm saying yeah. it's pitch black at night. No thanks. Yeah, what if it's windy? I'll just stay in my car. Actually, I don't know. I don't know what I do. <laughs> I just don't want to be in that situation ever. But I'm sorry, continue. Um, there's also an urban legend that talks about a girl who was murdered on the bridge and she was celebrating her birthday. And when she got separated from the group, everyone kind of went searching for her, but she was never seen again. And it wasn't until the next morning that they found her body and her killer was never found. Wow. Right? And it said that if you go um, to the bridge in full darkness and cross it singing the song Happy Birthday, you will hear a girl scream as she's being murdered. That's terrifying. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Their legend um, is uh, for people driving over the bridge. It's to do with the train tracks nearby the bridge, I guess. Stories ha- have said that the cars would stall near the tracks and the headlights would go out and die. Others have claimed that they would like the, the car would stall on the tracks and an invisible force would like push them out of the way. That's creepy. 
That's crazy. That's crazy. So it's almost like, um, it's almost seems like there's two forces at mm-hmm. work there. Or it's just being, I don't know, I guess the wrong word is playful in a sense. Uh, strong energy. That's interesting. That's mm-hmm. crazy, but interesting. Yeah. I'm going to have to check it out now. And uh, that's it. That's all I got for the bridge. All right. Well, that was good. Like, I mean, short but sweet, but it was really interesting to to hear about the history of the bridge and, and some of the things um, that uh, have gone on there or have said to gone on there. So we're going to move right in and talk about the Dundurn Castle in Hamilton, Ontario. So the Dundurn Castle was constructed in 1835 by architect Robert Charles Wetherill. The property was purchased from one of Hamilton's earliest settlers, Richard Beasley, by Sir Alan McNabb. During a financial crisis, Beasley sold his land, now known as Dundurn Park. McNabb built his castle on the foundation of Beasley's original brick home. The Dundurn Castle has a reputation for some of its prominent guests like Sir John A. MacDonald and King Edward VII. The pillars and portico were added in 1855 for McNabb's daughter's wedding. In 1899, the castle was sold to the city of Hamilton. So something that I kind of found interesting about this castle in particular was that there was actually a piece of music written for bagpipes in honor of this castle. I'm not too sure why, but I mean, that's pretty cool. And now the castle operates as a civic museum, which is surrounded by green space and it's used for weddings, uh, wedding photos, outdoor theaters and picnics and what have you. So kind of reminds me a lot of um mclaughlin mansion in lake oshawa oh yeah yeah so other than that that was pretty much the the history for the dundurn castle and um all that that has to offer and more importantly we want to talk about the ghost and what's been going on there with the ghost so again i'm going to pass it over to Bree so we can hear about some of the ghost history as well Thanks. All right. So the ghost of Dundurn Castle in Hamilton. There have been actually a lot of experiences and sightings with the castle. Um, This makes many people believe that Sir Alan McNabb and his family still frequent the halls of the castle. Uh, Just outside where the McNabb, uh, his second wife, Mary, passed away. She passed away from tuberculosis. They say you feel like many chills and a very mysterious draft that will blow out your candles in your room or even near the room. Wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, There still remains drafts in the the building, obviously. Things moving on their own, uh, sounds of mysterious music and singing. Wow. It's amazing how we always hear of the same thing things like it's just it's i don't know it's just crazy like i just find that you hear the very similar story yeah which is cool you know whatever so macnab's daughter sophia was sent away to be married just after he had died and she never came home some say her spirit came back and settled into the castle i guess they've seen uh silhouettes of her Um, The castle itself has a violent history, and a few decades before 1814, 15 men were convicted of treason and sentenced to death. Wow. Yeah, and it's known as the Bloody Assize. Like on the grounds, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. It was was here that eight of those men were hung and decapitated for their crimes, and the other seven were exiled. Though three of them died of typhus, and one escaped and was never found. Oh. Mm-hmm. So that could be also the other ghosts there. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. For sure. Interesting. Yeah. And that's it. That's all I got for the ghosts. Well, that's <laughs> quite a bit. That's quite a bit. Lots going on there. And definitely, like, this is another one that's close by. And I just realized that all the ones that we're doing today are all in Ontario. Oh, are they? 
Yeah. 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 So unintentional folks. (laughs) That's all we got for the Dundurn Castle. Now we're going to move in and start talking about the Cornwall Jail in Cornwall, Ontario. The Cornwall Jail was built in 1833. It's situated on the corner of Water and Pitt Streets. And it's known as one of the oldest remaining public structures in Ontario. The first building was erected in 1802. It was quite a small building at 30 by 24 feet. It had two stories, the lower floor having three rooms, one for the jailer and the other two were for the prisoners. The cell floor and roof had 24-inch timber walls that were 8 feet high. And the upper floor had three rooms as well, one large, which was used by the court and the jury. And the other two were also used by the court and the jury as well. During the War of 1812, the courthouse was given up and used as a barracks. The courts were temporarily relocated. In 1826, a fire broke out and the courts again were temporarily relocated. And as mentioned, the new courthouse and jail was in the works, and the main block was completed in 1833. And the additions to the structure were added over time, and as it was needed, so that they were, uh, as it was needed, so the you know, as it grew, um, they would just add on to this jail. And the jail was used until 2002, until it finally closed. And then they started tours of the jail starting in 2005. So you can go in and see where all the prisoners were, the common areas, the offices, and and what have you. And, you know, maybe have a paranormal experience. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Bree for the paranormal aspect of the Cornwall Jail. Bree? All right. Thank you. No problem. So many died on the premises due to executions, illness, and in some cases, torture and murder. Uh, Bodies that were not claimed by any families were buried on the premises. So, of course, there's going to be definite energy there, negative and, and, and bad energy. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean... With with so many things like that, definitely they're going to draw something. Mm-hmm. And then during the reconstruction, multiple bodies were dug up. And there is still an estimated 100 bodies buried through the premises between the parking lot and the exercise yard. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, I mean, Wow. <clears throat> I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. And I know, I think, me too. Like, as I read it, it, it <laughs> yeah. that's happened this year alone with yes. recoveries of bodies. So Yes, yes. Oh, my God, yes. Um, yes. Hmm. There's uh, many visitors that when they're there, they feel the energy. And few of them have claimed to see the infamous lady in black. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They also have seen the boy named Matthew who haunts the courtroom. There have been many encounters and events that were very bizarre, uh, and they say that each room has its own story to tell. So that's creepy itself, like each room. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, there was a death of a judge during a trial, um, so you can only imagine. Telephones yeah. in the building calling 911 during the night when there was no one in, no one in the jail. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> right. Uh, there's been many staff and visitors, actually, that have heard the jingling of keys and chains, uh, whistling and a harmonica playing. Uh, and once again, when someone goes to investigate, there's nobody there. <laughs> wow. That's not say. Eh? Yeah. There's also been footsteps heard in the courtroom above the jail um, when it should be empty. So a lot of activity there. Yeah, lots of activity there. I can definitely see why it's so, so active. Mm-hmm. And so that's all I have for the uh, Cornwall Jail. Awesome. Well, that was really cool. It was really interesting to hear that. And now moving on to our paramedia segment where we are going to talk with Sarah Zamet, who is the series producer of Hotel 
Paranormal, where we get to pick her brain about the show, about filming locations, about experiences, and most importantly, about Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> yeah, most important. <laughs> All right, so as promised, we have Sarah, who is the series producer for Hotel Paranormal with TNE. So I want to welcome Sarah to the show um, because we have a lot of questions for Sarah and we are looking forward to this interview because, you know, we are so uh, in, uh, involved with the show um, and watching it and, and kind of seeing what evolves. So we're very happy to have Sarah here and be able to pick her brain on Hotel Paranormal. So welcome, Sarah, to the show. Thanks so much. I'm really happy to be here. Great. Well, as, as, as I said, we are very uh, involved into the show. We love watching it. So Great. tell us a little bit about yourself and what your role is with Hotel Paranormal. Uh, well, I'm the series producer on the show, so um, I basically oversee uh, creative and production on the show. So um, making decisions about stories and style and, um, and uh, you know, the, the execution of everything that we need to get the shows on air. Um, so, you know, it's a big team. There's lots of people involved. There's an enormous amount of great talent on the series. Um, and um, and so so I think probably that's why people are <laughs> enjoying the series. We, we have a great group of people working on the show. Definitely, and it and it shows because you know there's a level of professionalism that you have to have in 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 any type of show to pull it off and make it work. And I think you guys have that um, mm -hmm. connection. You all guys all make that connection together, and you can see that. Oh, sure. great! I'm glad to hear yeah. that. Thank you. So what intrigued you about Hotel Paranormal? What kind of draws you back to it every time? Well, I think, I mean, you know, the, uh, the idea was brought to me and I was hired with the idea um, already in place. But what drew me to the idea was, um, you know, tra having traveled, having been in older hotels um, and, you know, um, and just sort of understanding the visual potential for the show, but also, um, you know, the shining and like, you know, rumblings of the series, I thought, okay, this is a really, really good idea. And I can really see how, um, you know, compelling it would be and how, you know, when people are traveling through and staying in places that they might experience ghosts or that they, you know, are walking into, you know, a story of, of you know, previous um, guests. So it, it was really compelling to begin with. Definitely. And, and as you said, I think to kind of touch on, you know, you stay in, in these hotels that have such a history and such a past. Um, and, you know, a lot of the times when you go to these hotels, um, unless somebody tells you, you don't know, or unless you do your own investigation. So it's really interesting to, to even for us doing this show, researching some of the paranormal um, hotels in, in Canada that have such a history that we've either been in or been around and, and never knew. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That's it, right. it, it, yeah, so it's 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 really interesting uh, what you can find or what you could dig up. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Um. So, what do you feel makes uh, Hotel Paranormal so popular in your eyes? Ah. Um. Well, I think that everybody stays in a hotel. Um. You know, or can relate <laughs> to, or know someone that has, or has stayed in a B and B, or has stayed at someone else's place, or has been mm -hmm. in short-term housing, or you know that you that you're in an environment that you uh, is unfamiliar to you, um, and that you know that you go for a good night's sleep, and mm -hmm. you know, and then something else happens. Um. So, so I think there's that. That's you know, we can all relate to to the idea of you know, checking in um, and then checking into another dimension, I think is, you know, in, intensely dramatic and compelling. Mm -hmm. um, and these are sort of ordinary experiences that we can all relate to. And then, you know, sort of ordinary folks having these extraordinary experiences. And I think it's something that's, you know, potentially accessible to all of us. So, mm -hmm. um, so I think there's something that's really appealing about that. And I think that, um, you know, the people that are, there's a range of stories, um, 
and you know the the contributors really gave a lot the people who told their stories really um you know were great storytellers and committed to telling us what had happened to them and i think um you know i think the the, the fact that people are responding to the series um, is is in tribute to them um, as well as to the experts because obviously what what they're saying um, you know is having an impact. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As the series producer, while on location, have you ever had any experiences of your own during filming? No, I haven't. But I, I I've worked on you know a number of film sets and not just related to the series, but um, have definitely had people tell me that they've had paranormal experiences, um, you know, on other film sets, but especially with a hotel that we were filming at in Ontario um, and yes. who, and they, you know, th- that was quite extraordinary to the, you know, to the point where some actors felt that they were having experiences, you know, at this hotel and some crew members and, and, you know, it, it, it affected, the way we were working, you know, so, um, so, um, you know, that was, that was kind of interesting, actually. Um, But I I haven't had it personally, but I definitely, you know, firsthand witnessed the look on people's faces the next morning when we all gather. um, And, you know, you say, how is your sleep? And, uh, and, you know, you see someone's, (laughs) a look on someone's face. And, you know, we had one crew member that actually went to another crew member and woke them up in the middle of the night. And I know, you know, I know these people well. And, um, and, um, and certainly the one experience that was described to me, um, you know, the guy was really shook up. And, um, and so, so yeah, that that's um, you know that was didn't happen as much in season one, but in season two it, it really did. Um, and wow. um, yeah, it was it was interesting to be making the show and then also you know sort of witnessing people having experiences. Yeah, firsthand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so what would you say was the most active location so far? Uh, well, we filmed the drama in, we didn't actually go to the hotels that we portray in the show. So we didn't, you know, we didn't go into the hotels that people talked about. So, oh. so for us, it, the drama was um, in, you know, in stand-in location. So, so that, that was the kind of, um, you know, we had that experiences in the drama, but we didn't go into actual locations and film. So, um, you know, but I think overall, um, you know, we had one of like a B and B um, where um, one of the contributors actually, you know, he was a non-believer and he and his daughter stayed at a haunted hotel because the daughter was a believer and the daughter wanted to convince her her father, who's a doctor and a man of science that, you know, ghosts exist. So they went to a haunted hotel. Right. Lo and behold, they have, you know, some paranormal experiences. Um, and it really transforms him and, and, um, and, you know, gets him very interested in, you know, his description was, you know, I wanted to just kind of put it away and never think about it again. But then on the other <laughs> hand, he had this huge sort of intellectual curiosity about, what had happened to him. And he thought, you know, maybe there was a hoax in the hotel. Maybe there was something that was made up. Maybe there's something that he didn't understand. So he actually purchased a B and B that they did a test drive to see if it was haunted. And they had some minor experiences there. So they bought the B and B and he set up cameras and actually recorded stuff. And, um, and the amount of activity in that B and B was pretty striking. Like to me, that was, you know, recorded, Proof. documented yeah, yeah, you know yeah. evidence from a guy who's very very rigorous and you know um you know i don't put weight on one person's story versus another i'm not here to judge but you know but yeah. it was just it, it was surprising because he stayed there for a length of time right because he actually bought the place and um right. so he was able as opposed to some of the other contributors that stayed in a hotel and then left and then decided like i'll you know probably i'll never <laughs> go back there again yeah, or yeah. whatever <laughs> so you don't get to see how haunted those places are but in that particular story um it was really quite something um quite so that, I, yeah. I love that story yeah awesome <laughs> that's cool so I know with the show, it takes you on many locations. Um, so what was your favorite location so far? Um, in terms of traveling? 
Yeah, let's put it that way, or in terms of um, like uh, the story uh, storyline. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I. Um, I, would st- I mean, I liked all, all of them. I mean, we like basically the process is that we 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 film the interviews, people tell us the stories, and then we film the drama in Canada, like in Ontario, okay. right? So all we right. don't travel anywhere. But um, so, but for sure, the the stories, um, um, you know, when I'm listening to the interviews, the stories sort of transport you, and I think that's one of my favorite parts of the process is that, um, you know, I, I really am. You know, we we we're very appreciative of the people that are willing to tell their stories, and um, I really take them seriously, and I really enjoy hearing the stories, and I really it, it's a process of discovery when you're in the interview to to really yes. understand like what happened and why, yes. and there's always stuff that comes up in the interview that you might not know about, you know, and so so that paints a very very vivid picture, I think, and and. Um, so, you know, I mean, we had so many different stories, you know, they're in the UK, across the States, um, yes. you know, in Canada and, um, you know, for me, what I, what I took away from the series was really what, what was interesting was the kind of the different kinds of paranormal encounters that people had. And so I've done, I did season one and I've been involved in other paranormal series and, um, and this series, I, I was surprised at the, the, the kind, like I heard about encounters that I'd never heard of before. And, wow. you know, people had, you know, encounters with sort of electrical entities and, you know, paranormal fire and, and a tornado that went through a room that a ghost was kind of seemingly manufacturing. Wow. Um, and she was, you know, a no nonsense woman, you know, she was not she just told the story, you know, and this is what happened, uh, take it or leave it. And, wow. um, and then a woman who is literally became another, like became the entity who, um, you know, slashed her wrists and was really looking to cause horror and distress. And so this woman was, you know, literally possessed in a dream or in a, in a bath. Like she wasn't, she wasn't dreaming. Wow. She, she was, you know, take overtaken. And then, you know, a man, was um you know had a dream of being handed severed limbs and and you know it turned out that they stayed in a field hospital that and and the room was a morgue where they did keep wow. dismembered limbs and so wow. so you know so he had a visitation of sorts so it was just it was just interesting the 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 you know the range of st- stories and and the range yes. of experiences so i really appreciated that about the season um of kind of being taken into the unexpected a little bit and um and and the level of detail that people were you know willing to to provide and um oh, for sure. and yeah so that that's for sort sure. of my my takeaway from season two amazing well you know we do quite a few interviews on the show ourselves and and i agree with you completely you never know what you're gonna encounter um you really take away their story and i think they're more appreciative of it because there's somebody there that wants to hear it and that's not afraid of it yeah Um, yeah. you know so i think having that outlet really kind of helps people um deal with it in a sense whether it be good or bad Um, so i think any type of um somebody wanting to hear that story I, I mean, maybe it'll appease the, the 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 apparitions or ghosts or spirit or whatever you call them, um, because that story is being told. Um, but I think it also helps the person that uh, is dealing with it as well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, for, that's, sure. for sure. Yeah, agreed. So have you, Sarah, have any personal dealings with paranormal outside of the series? No, I haven't. Um, I, I get asked that quite a bit. Um, but no, I have not. And um you know, to me, I don't know, you know, I, I think it, it hasn't changed the way I approach no, um, no. the story, you know, like I'm, I'm even more curious perhaps <laughs> because yeah, I, for sure. I haven't had any experiences, you know, um, but you, one thing that, you know, I, I did notice when I started working on shows like this and in particular, you know, Hotel Paranormal season one and two was, um, you know, was... Uh, 
you know, I would tell people what I was working on and, and it, inevitably they would have a story and, you know, I've said this before <laughs> or whatever, but that, that was really the most interesting part outside of making the series was just how pervasive, you know, it's like, it's like the great unspoken thing or something, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's, right. like, it's just under the surface. And if you rate, you know, you'd never ask that question if, you know, or I wouldn't have in the past really talked about it or had, you know, had a reason to kind of delve into that, but almost everyone I speak to literally has a story. Um, Mm. So, so that is, you know, sort of, I think also a reason why people might be interested in these types of shows. Yeah, yeah sure. I, I think, like you said, it's just under the surface. So once you start scratching, that's it. And it's yeah. released, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so tell me, what is it like working with the original Ghostbuster, Mr. Dan Aykroyd? Oh, wow. It's such, <laughs> I, I, it's such an honor, truly. Um, I bet. It's just, he is incredible, um, you know, amazingly professional, Um incredibly talented um, and um, just, you know, it helps elevate the show. And so, um, you know, he really has been, um, you know, um, supportive and interested in the series and really, you know, obviously an expert on the subject matter. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And his, as his, you know, is his family. And, and so it's just, yeah, it's just been, it, I can't believe it. Sometimes I pinch myself when, when I realize that I'm actually <laughs> talking to him. So, um, so yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure, and That's I can't cool. wait to see uh, the next Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Me too. Me too. I, I, I want to see Ghostbusters. Uh, out. So, um, so yeah, that's that's uh, just been a, a, an exceptional part of, of, of being able to work on this series, working with Dan. Uh-huh. Yeah, I bet. I, I, I recently just watched um, the original Ghostbusters. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, so did I, actually. Yeah. 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 So it, uh, it really kind of brings me back to, to when I was younger and, and yeah. you know, what have you. And um, it was so much fun. It was such a fun movie. It was, well, it's it set was. the stage for the work that we're doing in a lot of ways, right? That's right. It's, it's that yeah. there's a way to look, you know, to talk about the subject matter in, in, in a way that's entertaining, but that mm-hmm. also... Um, you know, is respectful. Um, so I think that's, right. that's uh, that was, you know, the original. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, yeah. He's the original OG. Is that what you're saying <laughs> yes. now yeah, these days? I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you would say that, but yes. <laughs> yes. I normally wouldn't even say that. It just <laughs> no, it felt fitting. <laughs> yeah, he's such an icon. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So... I guess that kind of leads us into the next question. So what can we expect from the rest of season two? Uh, I think more great stories. Um, really. I mean, if, if, you know, if there, there's, um, I feel like it's, it's, uh, if you like the first three, you'll like the last, you know, seven. So, um, you nice. know, there's lots of great storytelling, um, you know, really interesting um, contributors. I, you know, I, I always I want to mention the experts as well. They, they were really fabulous. Um, and, um, you know, a big part of the, the storytelling as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would stay tuned because there's lots more jump scares and scares and, <laughs> and really, truly, you know, interesting explorations of what it means to have a paranormal encounter in a hotel coming up. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Can't well, wait. We, yeah, <laughs> we, we are definitely already looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. So even to further that, and then this is kind of our final question that we have, can we expect season three of Hotel Paranormal? Well, I wish I knew. I hope, I oh. hope that, uh, <laughs> that's something that will happen. Um, so I don't, I don't have information on that just yet, but, uh, you know, fingers crossed and keep watching and hopefully uh, we'll come back with another season. Yeah. I kind of have no doubt with that, but <laughs> oh, that's good. hopefully that's the great. that they're listening, yeah. but, yes. um, you know, uh, with regards to it, we, we, if there is a season three, we, we expect, you know, the same quality that we're getting season one and two. It's just mm-hmm. been phenomenal. So, you know, 
as kind of to wrap it up as well, you know, we want to thank everybody that's involved with the show for their hard work and efforts. Um, thank you, Sarah, for being on our show. Mm-hmm. Thank you, TNE and Melissa for, you know, setting up this interview and hosting the show as well. So it's kind of, you know, a combined effort. So we definitely appreciate all uh, the stuff that TNE does uh, with the paranormal realm, uh, because you know that that's what we do too. So um, we feel it's a good fit. So <laughs> yeah, got well, Someone's got to tell their stories, right? Yes, yes. there's got to be some sort of an outlet to mm-hmm. to let people know of what what else is going on in this world, just not what's right in front of us. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for um, asking me to come on the show. I really enjoyed chatting with you guys. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we enjoyed having you. You're more than welcome to come back anytime you like. Absolutely. Thanks so much. <laughs> Take care, guys. You, you too, too as well. Take care. Yeah, so how interesting was that to be able to talk with Sarah and and pick her brain on Hotel Paranormal and just uh, find out some of those questions that I know we had. So hope that answers some of the questions that you had as well, you know. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Was- yeah, it was really, really good. Mm-hmm. It was really good. So as always, you can catch Hotel Paranormal on t and every Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, so that brings us to a close. Season 2, Episode 10. Thanks for joining us for this episode. Um, We always look forward to putting out these shows for you. And as always, contact us with any experiences that you have with the paranormal and visit our Facebook page. And uh, don't forget to like us. check out our posts and stuff like that on Facebook and like them too. So Brie, let us know how you can get in touch with us. Okay. Um, You can reach us at paranormalfilescanada at gmail.com. We have a Facebook page, which is Paranormal Files Canada. On Instagram, Canada Paranormal Files. And on Twitter, PFC Sean underscore Brie. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for that. And that is definitely how you can get a hold of us. Go to our webpage as well, which has all the links to where our podcast is located. And uh, you can listen there. So again, thank you for joining us. Stay safe. We'll see you next month. And stay spooky. spooky.